Hello, hello there. You are someone and I am someone else. And today, we are going to be talking about... We're going to be talking about welfare. And why I think that welfare and... There's so many other types of spending in the United States. But welfare... We spend more on welfare than the military. I feel like we, we almost spend about as much as the military. And we spend way more on welfare than like the the banker bailout and the um the banker bailout which everyone talk, complains about and the um and the money we've given to oil companies like we spend way more on that kind of crap uh, on welfare than that kind of crap so but they only care about the small bit of spending like that the oil companies get and not the welfare and yes is it the state's responsibility to take care of its poor citizens maybe I could, I could see an argument for that. Uh, I would argue that it should be your responsibility to take care of your wealth. But if you want the state to manage your wealth, don't expect much. That's, that's what I'm going to say. Don't expect much. I know that's not a threat. It's just me basically saying that state-run welfare doesn't often work very well. Even in Finland, I feel like there's still some flaws to it. I think Finland would even want people to be more productive than just drained off their welfare system. That being said, it's very, very rare to become as wealthy as Finland, so... Let's expect that you're not going to be living on welfare as rich as a Finnish person. That being, okay, that being honest, right, being said, our welfare system is terrible, right? Some guy said it is a uh, polymorphous uh, health, uh, welfare system, right? The problem with our welfare, and this is a big issue, is it encourages single motherhood. Um, you know, you don't have to worry about what's in your bedroom. You know, you have to worry about what's in the forms, on your government forms. You can easily lie on those forms, and the government doesn't really care. There's no incentive to improve it, and that's an issue. And I think the best way there there's a few ways we could probably improve it to like in, discourage single motherhood, or, or even like um, you know some people don't even have kids, and like they encourage um, people to get divorce, uh, get um, abortions and stuff like that. Like our taxes go to a lot of stuff. It doesn't go directly to abortions. Uh, that much, but like, you know, still, right? When it comes to welfare, like, my opinion is okay, why should I pay for that? Why should my taxes pay for other people's living, right? Right? So, like, for instance, what I, what I believe anyway, right? Is, um, people, people often, they, they will just live at home. Eat a bunch of food. Like I've seen people uh, on those shows, the obesity shows, they're living on welfare, and they're like mega obese. I'm like, this is a massive waste of resources. Not only for the person receiving the welfare, they're wasting their time by just eating and sleeping on their bed, and they're not really doing anything else. Like I don't know if that's the most comfortable way to live, in my opinion. But then, but then on top of it, them receiving the money that I gave in taxes to them indirectly. I mean. Personally, it's, it went through a whole, a bunch of bureaucracies. I mean, it's only like 30 to 40 percent of my tax money is going to welfare. Maybe even more than that, because I know my state's a very high welfare state. So it's probably more like 60 to 70 percent of my money goes to people, takes care of people that I don't care about or don't know about. Why should my money go to someone else, right? Why should I pay for your abortion? I didn't have uh, relations with you. Why should I pay for your child? Well, again, I didn't have relations with you, and why should I be responsible for the child? Well, if I was the stepfather, I could see me being responsible. Okay, I'm in a relationship. I need to respect your boundaries. Okay, I'll take care of your kid. You know, I can't see that happening if I'm not the parent of the child. Why does my money have to ever be involved with that? But that's what the state does. The state says, oh, we're going to tax you and we're going to give it to some single mother. Now, granted, is it an unfortunate situation that sees a single mother? Yeah, absolutely. Is that kid going to end up mentally scarred probably for certain for some reason, right, single mothers, the, the the results of single motherhood, now even my friends, the people who are raised by single mothers have much worse results than people who are raised by two parents, who two parents who are relatively stable. Like, I've seen one person being raised by mostly their father and the mother had schizophrenia, and then she was just, like, all crazy and mentally not there, right, because her mother wasn't mentally there. And she learned from her mother a little bit, but she's always afraid of what her mother might say because she's so schizophrenic. Her father is very, very conservative. But like, you know, like that that sort of situation is very, very sad when you have one parent that can't do anything or is mentally crazy, 
that's basically being a one parent um, household. I was lucky enough to be in a two parent household. But you think about it, like, how does our, our welfare system, I think most of the time it goes to single mothers. And nothing wrong with that necessarily, right? But I think the best thing we can do instead of giving money to people is to give them negative tax income breaks. So I want to encourage as much work as possible, as much economic output as possible. Our welfare system does not do that. I think the best thing we can do, if you make a certain amount a certain amount under the poverty line, okay, UBI. We're just going to UBI for everybody making under a single amount, um, regardless of your kids or not. And then what we do is if you have one kid and you're a mother, let's say you're a woman, right? Or if you're a man and the woman's not there anymore and she's not raising the kid, then I'm, I believe you deserve most of the tax break. But let's just say it's negative 25% for every kid you have. And if you remain married and you have four kids, and this I have told this again with my my taxation video, but my taxation video goes very in, more in detail than this. After four kids and you remain married, 100% of your taxes are not taxed whatsoever. Uh, I believe it should be the same for anybody in the military. Once you do 20 years of service, no taxes on your income. Uh, and I do also believe that you should o outright own your property. You shouldn't pay any federal income tax on your property whatsoever. And no state income tax in my opinion as well. And then, and that's set, that's not being inherited. It's just be one generation sort of thing. Uh, if the kid gets that property, right, and, and they didn't serve in the military, then they don't get the inheritance. But let's say they serve only like two years in the military and the father served in the military and he had already had the tax inheritance, the child should get that. That's my personal opinion on tax. Like I, I want to I want to have as much productive, hardworking people, and people who are very hardworking are generally in the military. Um, even though they're not producing anything economically, they are supporting the supply chains economically. Um, you know, do they bomb? Sometimes they bomb Israel or Gaza or whatever, but that we're not going to talk about that. But that's basically what happens, right? Military protects the supply chain, so they are being productive in indirect role most of the time. It probably would be better if we just had a security force and not attacked offensively, but whatever. Um, but yeah, with welfare, I should be talking more about welfare. I'm sorry, my, my friends, I'm sorry. But like with welfare, right? Give everybody UBI. UBI, it's going to cause inflation, but it gives people the illusion of choice, right? Because again, I'm no socialist. I know what UBI is going to do. It's very, very negative what UBI does. Even with automation, it won't solve the poverty whatsoever. UBI is the bare minimum of what you need to freaking solve the poverty. You need to have more production. Now, once you've you've temporarily stifled the economy by adding, having a lot of money chase very few goods. So what you need to do is now give tax breaks to people. Tax breaks to poorest people, right? You Again, I mean, tax break if you're making below a certain amount, or if you have one kid, two kids, or three kids, like anybody has independence, should get tax breaks. Um, again, our birth rate's really low, so we can actually support that. Like people always say, oh, it would be stupid if we our population would go over, um, you know, our population would grow, uh, would always go up and up and up. It's not though. It's not. And people say, well, there's not enough space on this earth. I disagree entirely. There's plenty of space on this earth. The issue is, right? This is the biggest issue is our birth rate so low that we can actually afford to do it. If we did it right now, our economy would improve dramatically, right? You have a child. Let's say you pay negative 25% less than your taxes. That you get that back. Let's say we just institute this year, right? And you get all that tax money back. Imagine how happy you would be. Yes, does it suck that you already paid that money to the government and you just didn't expect it to get it back? Yeah, it kind of sucks. Like you didn't get to use the money to, uh, you know, during that time frame, but if we could give them tax breaks, like that's really what I want. If we're gonna have the income tax rate, right, right? In my opinion, income tax would never be above twenty five percent, regardless if you're a multi millionaire, whether you have stocks, whether you're stock selling dividends, I don't care, right? Or if you're just making money through your job, it's never be more than twenty five percent. I don't care if you're a multi billionaire. Billionaires should be paying tax twenty five percent taxes, and then like the poorest people should be paying nothing. And so get the UBI, and it will cause inflation. It will. I don't believe that UBI will ever in increase production. I don't believe it for a second. I don't care what people say. 
the producers are not getting the UBI directly. It's the it's the poorest people, and the poorest people will spend it on what the producers are making. Hopefully, that will cause the producers to make more mu- more stuff, but we don't know, right? Let's say we give the UBI up to way too many people to where there's no producers anymore. That's going to be an issue. And so what you have an issue is with the welfare system. This is the way I like to think about it. Let's say you have horses and you have a wagon. Now, if you have more people in that wagon than you have horses, you have more people whipping the horses. There's less and less horses and more and more people go on the welfare. That's the people in the back whipping the horses. Then eventually you're going to have the whole system collapse. And sometimes you can lead to inflation like... Um, like what Venezuela did. Um, and Venezuela also nationalized the businesses. That's a big issue right there. Not only did you nationalize the businesses, but then you hyperinflated your currency by... Like, I hate when Marxists always say, oh, the inflation rate is only because of... of whatever the U.S. government did. I'm like, no. It has nothing to do with the U.S. government. The, the Boulevard, whatever currency they have, the Venezuelan Boulevard, that currency was inflated because of government action. Because of welfare. They said, oh, we'll take care of you with unlimited needs. We're going to nationalize all these industries. And then there's an economic, again, economic calculation problem. Socialism has this issue. And nobody understands the economic calculation problem. Nobody understands the knowledge problem. Without prices in the economy, nobody can, like, again, let's say you buy your favorite cup of coffee, right? And it turns out it's like, what, 200% more expensive, right? Let's just say it is. You have no idea why. But now you're going to make a more educated get, a more educated choice based on the price. That's called the knowledge problem right there. Even though you had no idea the rainforest, the coffee was falling down and was not producing as much coffee, some weather event destroyed the rainforest, but that price led you to the decision of not paying for that coffee anymore. Supply and demand equaled out based on the price order. It's a little strange, but yeah. And then the, the economic calculation problem is, let's say, I don't know, you need a... You're a Soviet planner, right? Let's say you're a Soviet planner. And you decide... You decide that you are going to... Um, go go build a train, right? You could do... You know, a couple things. You can uh, explode a mountain... Uh, put a tunnel in the, uh, in the mountain... Or you have to go around the mountain. If you go around the mountain, all you gotta do is... Um, use up a ton of steel. That takes a lot of resources. But then, you also... Ha- uh, you know, let's say you dig a tunnel in the mountain, right? That may use up less steel. Definitely will use up less steel. But you're going to need TNT and you're going to need an engineer. And you'll make sure people are safe. And you're going to use up the engineers from other industries for your railroad. And so there's a limited amount of labor. There's a limited amount of supplies. And you can't calculate it without prices. And this is what people don't understand about prices are what causes the economy to, to boom and bust as well. But... This, the thing is, boom and bust is more of a, it's more of a uh, symptom than a than a terribleness. Do you, do you see what I get? Like the boom and bust cycle, when it comes to prices, people always say this is all. Oh, it's terrible that the stock market crashes and a bunch of people lose their job. But it's not like the whole economy crashes. Like when the Soviet Union collapsed, it was devastating for so many people. It was not this. It was not this. T- a few businesses. It was the entire government. The Soviet government collapsed, and it was. You had a bunch of military kudos and a, uh, you know, all these different republics in the Soviet Union, right? That's the thing. That's what socialism produces. It co- produces collapsing government. It doesn't just produce a few uh, a big stock market bubble like we have. Which we have a Keynesian economy, right? Uh, if we had the, the 1920s economy, we would not have this issue. But because we're a Keynesian economy, and people say we're hyper capitalists, I disagree entirely. We're Keynesian. I don't care what you say. Keynesianism leads to inequality. Yes, it does. Keynesianism is the worst society because Keynesians will will say, oh, it doesn't lead to inequality, and then it does. It does. Um, there, There's no... I don't know if you can ever really disagree. They do believe in production, I guess, more than socialists definitely do. Um, and again, socialists, they talk about rights, but they don't talk about responsibilities. They say, oh, the workers already have all the responsibility, but that's not necessarily true. They're not responsible for the capital of the business. I don't pay for the pallet jacks at Amazon. Yeah, that's the other way. Should I be responsible for the stuff my employer provides me? Who should be responsible for that? The state? The workers? The worker council? Who should be responsible for it? The, the shareholders? The shareholders are in my, in my Keynesian case. Right? This is the issue with welfare, socialism. I should not be. I should be going back to welfare, right? Anyway, welfare. Again, UBI, tax breaks. 
Uh, if you remain married with four kids, no, in no income tax, if you're in the military, after, let's say, four years to 20 years, no income tax, um, you know, I want to have incentivizing behavior. I don't know four years, but let's say 20 years in the military would be good. We, we need people to stay in for a long, for some some people long period. No, I wouldn't say 20 years. I'll do eight years. Hey, I'm not in the military. I shouldn't be making military policy. But, you know, if I was ever a politician, I was elected. Although I would probably join the military before I become a politician. You guys go to war. Anyway, that's besides the point, right? You are someone, I am someone else. Talking about why we need to replace our current welfare system and radicalize it like a socialist would. Destroy it from the inside out and create UBI. Uh, talking about that, um, goodbye. <laughs>